So perfect. We've seen the equations before and now it's time to apply those equations. So let's do this example which is talking about continuous reactors. I remember you that CSTR, PBR and PFR, hopefully you know what that means, continuous shear tank reactor, plug flow reactor and packbed reactors are continuous. Batch reactor is not a continuous reactor. So they tell you, given the next reaction, you got A, transforms into B, you got this volumetric flow rate, which is essentially 10 cubic decimeters per minute. You know that the volumetric flow rate at the inlet is the same as the outlet, so let's say this is constant. And they give you the rate of reaction, which is essentially not a value, but it's dependent on concentration. So you got this K, which is a constant, 0.23 minutes and this con concentration, so it varies with concentration. They tell you number or letter A, please give us the reactor volume and do not substitute data, just variables, okay? So once we got that, if the exiting concentration is 10% of the entering concentration, uh, what, well, I think you're going to calculate the volume here. And then they tell you what reactor would you choose. So we're going to do it for CSTR, continuous steel tank reactor, and plug flow reactor. PBR, no, why not? Because we will need more data, more about the mass of reactor, about the constant or the rate of reaction. We will need this, prima. And yeah, essentially only CSTR and PFR. So I got this data, the reaction, the volumetric flow rate, and this constant. Okay, let's do it first for the continuous tear tank. So I got this, my master equation. Let's change it to concentration. We could either go directly and look out for this. This is my equation. But I'm just going to do it so you can see that you can actually do it every time you want it. You don't need to go directly to your formulary if you know this very well, you can change it, just remember flows and concentration have a relationship and yeah, let's substitute, this will be my equation and now let's substitute the rate of reaction which is K times concentration which is here, I just substituted this here and they tell me they wanted the final concentration, they want it to be 10% of the initial concentration how do we do that is essentially one tenth of that initial concentration which is here okay so let me just substitute that so I got this initial concentration that stays the same minus the final concentration but the final concentration is one tenth of that initial concentration so I got this and this concentration is also final very important it's not the initial it's the final concentration so let me all, once again substitute one tenth of the initial concentration. Now, as you can see, this will get 9 times divided by 10. Volumetric flow rate stays there. Initial concentration stays there. All this divided by K times one tenth times concentration in the initial state. So this is just algebra. This and this go away. This tenth and this tenth go away. And I end up with this beautiful equation. It only depends on volumetric flow rate and the constant, which is not strange that is the only data that we get, the volumetric flow rate and the constant. What a coincidence. Okay, before calculating the volume, I want to calculate that of PFR. So I got the same data here, this equation. I got this volumetric flow rate and this K. Exactly the same because that is of the reaction, has nothing to do with my reactor. So let's model the plug flow reactor. Remember, I'm going to draw you a diagram so you are not that lost. You got an inlet, you got an outlet, and the reaction happens here. My design equation is this one, or this one if you go directly to the substituted equation, which I will recommend you to do. So we got this equation. Now, we cannot go further because we need to substitute this value here. So I know that the rate of reaction, which is minus RA, 
equals the constant times the concentration. But I don't need negative, I need positive because I got it here positive, so I just change this negative here. Okay? I substitute this data here, which is this one here. This stays the, here, the same, it's volumetric flow rate times the derivative as concentration with respect to volume. And yeah, I will start doing my differential equation. I take out here my concentration because there's the derivative and the volume goes here. Constant and volumetric flow rate is once again a constant. So let us integrate from initial concentration to final concentration. Is the derivative of concentration divided by concentration itself. Now from zero to volume and this is a constant, so you will probably know that this beautiful integral is volume. So this is mathematics. The, in, the integral of 1 over Ca is natural logarithm of concentration. We need to evaluate it at final and initial. And this is a value. And once again, I told you this was volume. So I got this integral as a volume. I evaluate this and I get this. So let me keep doing some math. Once again, don't forget that they are asking us to do the 10%. So 1 tenth of the initial concentration is my final concentration. So this is my final concentration divided by initial concentration. And yeah, this is constant, this is constant. Uh, I got this value, which is actually a number if you check it in the calculator. This constant, yes, I have it. And this volumetric flow rate, I have it. So I can find volume. Actually, let me uh, find value, the volume, just multiply volumetric flow rate divided by the constant they gave us, don't forget this negative sign, times the natural logarithm of one tenth. So once again, you get this equation, which is the volume for a PFR reactor. Now let me just, once again, check the equations I got from my mathematical development. I substitute data, 9 times 10 cubic decimeters divided by minute. All this is divided by this constant, which is 0.23 minutes to the minus 1. So thank God I can cancel this minute and minute, and my solution end up being cubic decimeters, 391.3, which is, let's say, 390 liters. Now, Let's go to the plug flow reactor, substitute data. My volumetric flow rate is 10 cubic decimeters divided by minutes. Then we got this k, which is 0.23 minutes to the minus 1. Once again, we will be able to take out those minutes. And the natural logarithm of 1 tenth is minus 2.3. So 10 times that divided by this. Once again, this is no coincidence. This goes out 2.3 and this is 0.23 and then you got 100 cubic decimeters, which is almost four times less as our other reactor. Uh, so if you ask me right now, if I have no clue of what is the actual situation, I will say I will prefer the PF PFR. First, because it's less volume. Second, less volume implies less cost of operation. Third, it implies also less cost of investment. Fourth, uh, it's easier to operate in lower quantities than higher quantities. And, uh, also, yeah, essentially those are my reasons. Of course, if your boss tells you I got a new, brand new reactor of 400 liters and it's already there, and you have no money to invest, well, of course, you will choose this one. But if you are starting from nothing, of course, this is the best decision. So that was my example. Hopefully you like it. I think you will like more this table, so keep watching because I'm going to explain you how we got this table. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. 
also sharing is caring so if you got any kind of friends teachers colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content why not share it sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content if you want to keep track of my activity videos uploads experiments playlists whatever content i'm getting on youtube be sure to click the subscribe button subscribing to the channel is totally free guys My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.